Okay, good morning, everyone. Uh, today's lecture, we will talk about uh, how to solve uh, for the transient response and first order circuits. So we are going to go through several examples. At the beginning, we will uh, introduce uh, uh, and explain uh, the time flow that we will be uh, using and uh, solving for those circuits. So it is very important at the beginning to understand the uh, distinguished time moments that we will be uh, using in our function. So at the beginning, if I put the time here as t, and then for me, what's important is, uh, is those time moments. So at the beginning, if this is the t equals zero moment, the three important time moments that we need to uh, identify here are at the beginning as the last moment in my steady state for the first circuit. Before I do the switching, that circuit, before I do the switching, I'm calling it circuit number one. After I move the switch, I will be getting a new circuit. So that circuit, I'm calling it circuit number two. So in circuit number one, this is the moment, the last moment that I am calling here zero minus. This one belongs to here, let me call this one circuit number one. And here the circuit has been under those conditions for a long time. So this is a steady state. So circuit number one, it's a steady state. And the last moment in this steady state before the switching happens is called zero minus. Now at t equals zero, the switch is going to move. So here, switch is moved then the first moment after the switch is moved it will be the first moment in the transient response i will call this moment t equals to zero plus so it is this moment just right after the switching, while this is the moment right before the switching, right? And then I have the transient. So the transient belongs to circuit number two. So here I have now circuit number two. And then I have a moment that is way greater than five tau. I will call it T infinity. Here we reach the steady states, five tau and above. So here is a steady state condition, right? So in circuit number one here, in circuit number one, I have capacitors, open circuit. I have inductor, a short circuit. Okay, the same for the steady state here. I have 
capacitors, open circuit. I have inductors are replaced as short circuit. So for me, when I am solving for the first order circuit, it is very important that I find the values for the voltage, for example, at T0, for the voltage then at T0 plus, and then for the voltage at T equal infinity, and then the tau, this is for the capacitor, for the inductor, I need the current at zero minus, the current at zero plus, and the current at infinity, and of course the tau. So this is basically, the here is the transient, I can call this one the transient, and this is the exponential function. We have seen that the that first order circuits are always going to respond in exponential function. Either if it's charging or discharging, in both cases, the function is exponential. And this is the transient. So the T, the zero plus is the beginning of the transient, and the T infinity is the end of the transient. At that level, I will be reaching the steady state. So now let's look at uh, how we can implement this understanding and what we call step-by-step -step approach for solving first-order circuits. So I have six steps that I need to follow in order to solve for first-order circuits. And they are very simple if you uh, understand uh, those uh, distinguished moments that we have talked about. You just need to follow this order. So the first step is basically knowing what you should be solving for. If it's a capacitor, then in this case, you need to solve for a voltage. So remember, what did we say? I need to find the voltage at the infinity, which is the steady state for the second circuit. I need to find the voltage at zero plus, which I will be getting from the zero minus because the voltage is continuous in uh, capacitors. So solving for the zero minus would basically give me the zero plus and then i need to solve for the v infinity which is the voltage for the capacitors at the circuit the steady state for circuit number two okay so this is for the capacitor for the inductor i will be solving for the current but still at the same distinguished time moments the infinity, which is the steady state for the second circuit. The zero plus, which I will be getting from the zero minus, which is also a steady state from the first circuit. And then the tau. So at the beginning, step number one is just writing the function. Put the function that you are solving. This is step number one. Step number two, which is the first circuit that is under DC conditions, as we said, steady state for first circuit. This uh, still here, the switch did not move. This is the zero minus moment that we have talked about. So what you do is redraw the circuit before the switching and substitute, replace the capacitor with an open circuit or an inductor with a short circuit because it's a steady state. Capacitors are working as an open circuit. Inductors are working as a as short circuits. And solve for the voltage, if it's a capacitor, that is called zero minus. 
or the current, if it's an inductor, that is zero minus. So here you're doing a DC under DC conditions. So you're solving under DC conditions, right? You find the voltage for the capacitor, if it's a capacitor, and this will be V0 minus, or you find the current for the inductor, and this is going to be I0 minus. So this is step number two. Step number three, which is zero plus. Here, the switching, the switching happened. So now you are getting a new circuit. Now, this is the condition that we use for the capacitor and for the inductor. For the capacitor, the voltage at zero minus is the same as the voltage at zero plus. Now remember, we are here. The switching happened. So how did I find the zero plus? It is the same as the zero minus because the capacitor is continuous. The voltage for the capacitor is continuous. For the inductor, the current is continuous, and that's why the I zero plus equals to I zero minus for the inductor. So that's a step number three, which is basically whatever you have found at zero minus would be the same as zero plus. So that's step number three. Step number four is at the infinity, which is the steady state for the second circuit. Again, capacitor is replaced by an open circuit. Inductor is replaced by a short circuit. And then we solve for V for the infinity moment for the capacitor or I for the infinity moment for the inductor. Now, step number five is finding the tau, the time constant. This is going to require your prior knowledge in uh, solving for the uh, R7N, how to find the R7N, and, uh, and uh, looking at the cases where you have dependent sources or non-dependent sources. So this is basically what you have done in uh, previous uh, lectures, what we have learned in previous lectures. With if it's a capacitor, this R7 and tau is R7 and C. If it's an inductor, then tau is L over R7. So step number five is basically finding R7 and then the time constant related to this R7. Step number six is substituting what we have found in the function in step number one. So step number one and step number six are basically here just for illust for illustration. The, the the main steps that you need to work on are uh, indeed uh, step number two, which is finding the voltage or the current at the zero minus. Step number three is the same of what you have found in step number two. And then step number four is finding the voltage or or the current at the infinity, which is steady state for circuit number two. And then step number five is finding the R7 and, and step number six, substituting what you have found. So let's go through this example together. Here, in this example, we need to find I naught T using the step-by-step -step approach. Always use the step-by-step -step approach. The, sw the, sw the switch was a closed for a long time, then opened at t equals zero. So I have here two circuits. The first circuit is when the switch was closed. The second circuit, the switch is, is opened. So let's start with those steps. Step number one. Put the function that you want to, to find. My function here is I naught T that equals to 
aynı an infinity plus aynı an zero plus minus aynı an infinity e to the power minus t over tau. So this is step number one. Step number two, which is moment of zero minus. Now this moment is a steady state. which means under DC conditions. Here my inductor is a short circuit. Which means I will redraw the circuit now. While the switch is closed, so this is gonna be my so let me So the current here is I naught zero minus, and I have here two resistors in parallel. I will find the equivalent right away, and then five k. Ten milliampere. So this is my. I will write circuit number one. And this is steady state, okay? I need to calculate for I not zero minus. Notice that this 2K has been shortened out by this inductor that is in parallel with it, working as a short circuit. So the current is indeed, so here there is no current, here I is zero. So this I naught zero minus is the same current going into the, this 2K. So here I have 2K and 2K, those two resistors are in parallel, right? Those two resistors are in parallel. You can, if you want, redraw the circuit. Without this 2K, it's gonna look like this. Right, notice in this case that using the current division, if you want, I have a current here, this is 10 milliampere, and now this current is going to split into two equal currents. So I naught zero minus is indeed five milliampere. So step number two is done. Step number three, which is at uh, zero plus, I know that I zero not zero plus equals to I not zero minus equals to five milliampere. Step number three is done. Step 
number four. Step number four is at t equals to infinity, which is basically, again, steady state after moving the switch. Moving the switch, right? Here, my inductor as a short circuit. Again. So, when the switch is open, the 2K is gone, right? When the switch is open, the 2K is gone. It's not gonna look different than, than the circuit that I have here. So let me, again, redraw. So we are at step number four. I will redraw the circuit now after removing, after the switch is open and, and replacing this uh, inductor with a short circuit, it's gonna look this way. I not infinity because this is the moment of of infinity, which is a steady state. Remember, this is circuit number number two. Right? So I not infinity is the same as I not zero minus that I found earlier. Why? Because when the switch was open, the 2K was gone. When the switch was closed, the inductor that was a short circuit shortened out the 2K. So nothing has changed. So here, I not infinity is still five milliampere. So, so that's a step number four. Now step number five. As tau, that is L over R seven. Of course now, don't forget that uh, the switch is already open, right? The switch is, is open. So my circuit is going to look like this. Okay, 5K, then the 10 milliampere, this is my inductor. So if I want to find the R7, and the first thing I would I will do is remove my inductor. I need to find R7 and looking from here. So what do I do? I don't have dependent sources, so it is enough for me to switch off the independent sources and find R7. And switching off a current means that you are removing this current. If I remove this current, because I, when I switch off a current source, I become zero. This means an open circuit in this case, it means as if I have removed this current source, I broke the circuit, right? Now here, our 7M becomes mm -hmm. 
The 5K is not going to contribute because it will it has an open circuit here. So R7, the inductor is going to see only two resistors that are connected in series. So when you find the R7, you look at how what is the current that will be, how is the current that's going to flow? It's going to flow this way, right? So the 5K is an open circuit. It's not going to contribute. And here R7 would be 4 kilo ohm, which means tau is L over this R7. Tau is 10 millihenry divided by 4 kilo and tau becomes 2.5 10 to the power minus 6 seconds so i found all the parameters that i want in my function I found the I not infinity. I found the I not zero plus and I found tau. Problem is solved. So here now step number six is basically step six is substituting what I have found. So I have I not T equals to I not infinity, which was five milliamp. I not zero plus, which was also five milliamp minus five milliamp e to the power minus t over 2.5 10 to the power minus six ampere now yes this is going to cancel this is going to be zero and I not T is not going to see any change in the in the current. So if I am now to draw the response versus time, this is I not T. The current is going to continue without any change. Okay, so we have a second example here. In this example, we need to find the V naught T at the two ohm resistor using step-by-step -step approach. The switch was closed for a long time and then opened at T equals zero. Again, let's put the same steps. So we have here step number one. which is basically, I need to find V naught T, but I will find it for the capacitor here first. So this is my capacitor. So this capacitor is V C T. So I have here V C T equals to VC infinity plus VC zero plus minus VC infinity E minus T over tau. Because this is the component that I have here. So I will find the 
voltage first on my component, which is the capacitor, and then later on I can find the V0T. So step number one, this is step number one. Okay. So this is now step number two. Again, in step number two, this is T equals to zero minus. So that's a, a steady state by capacitor here is an open circuit. So our redraw and the switch is here closed, right? The switch is closed. Redrawing the circuit, replacing the capacitor with an open circuit. So I have here my circuit number one. Two ohm, two ohm, eight volt, two, C zero minus one ohm twelve. I need now to calculate for VC zero minus. So in this circuit, I will use the nodal analysis to find VC zero minus. I will say that the voltage here, this node is V1, this node is V2, and I will write the nodal equation. So nodal equation number one and V1, what do I have? I have V1 minus 12 divided by one plus V1 minus V2 divided by two, All right, equals to zero. So not the equation at V2. Now here, what do we have here? We have V1 equals V. So once I found V1, Vc zero minus is, is V1, right? So V2 here is V2 minus V1 over two plus V2 minus minus eight plus eight over two plus V2 over two equals to zero. Now, if you solve those two equations, you will find that here we have from the first one, From the first equation, if you multiply by two, you will get three V one minus V two equals to twenty four. Multiply by two and rearrange from the second equation. If you rearrange it, you will get, so this is from 
one from two. If you rearrange the equation, you're going to get minus a three b one minus plus nine b two equals to minus twenty twenty four. Of course, rearranging and multiplying by by three. And then you can add those two equations. And what you're going to get is V2. If you add this one, if you call it, if you call this one three, this one four, so three plus four, you're going to get eight V2 equals to zero, and V2 equals to zero. And if you substitute um, one, for example, V2 equals to zero, you are going to get three V1 equals to 24, and V1 equals to eight volts. V1 equals to eight volts, which means that VC zero minus VC zero minus as eight volts. So this is step number two. Now step number three. Which is T equals zero plus. I have here PC zero plus equals to BC zero minus equals to eight volts. Step number four is T equals to infinity. Now we are at circuit number two. This is a steady state capacitor as an open circuit. I will need to redraw now the circuit after the switch is, is open. Okay. So here, after the switch is open, the the sub branch will be gone. Okay. So, if I am to redraw the circuit after opening, so what do I have? I have this two, two capacitor is an open circuit. I have this one and then this source 12 volt, one, two, and two, the OT, and this is VC infinity. So this is circuit number two. Right? I need now to calculate for VC infinity. Now, if I look at, uh, at this circuit, I can see that uh, VC infinity is across this two and this two that are in series, which basically looks as a voltage division to me. So VC infinity is indeed 12 times 4 over 4 plus 1. So VC infinity as 4 divided by 5 times 12 is 9.6 volt. 
So I found VC infinity, I've, I found VC zero plus. Now I need to find the tau. So I'm done with the step number four, and now I'm moving to step number five. Step five, which is finding tau, I will So step five, finding tau for the capacitor, tau is R seven and C. This is after the switch has been moved, after moving the switch. I will redraw the circuit now with no switch and I will remove the capacitor in order to find R7 in. And I will later on switch off because I don't have dependent sources. I will switch off all independent sources. So let me first redraw the circuit without, with the switch being open. Two and two, one. Now this was the source. If I switch it off, it's gonna be a piece of wire. Zero volt means a wire short circuit. So I have here one. So R7 in this case is this four, two and two, right? two and two that are in series and both are in parallel with, with one, right? So this is what my R7 is. So I have here four in parallel with one. So R7 is four times one divided by four plus one. And this is gonna give me four divided by five, which is 0.8 ohm. So 0.8 ohm, tau is 0.8 times two micron. So tau is 1.8. 6, 10 to the power minus 6 second, right? Then now VC T is, how much was the V infinity? 9.6 plus how much was the zero plus eight volt minus 9.6 e to the power minus t over 1.6 1.6 10 to the power minus six volt so BC T is 9.6 minus 1.6 E to the power minus T over 1.6 power minus 6 volt. And now I need to calculate B naught T. So I found PCT. Now, 
if I wanted to calculate V naught T, I would go back to the circuit number two. And circuit number two, the switch was already open and I have Two, two, one, twelve. So this one is BCT. So looking at uh, the circuit, I can see that V naught T can be found from VCT using the voltage division. So V naught T. And this is going to take me now to finalizing step number six. I have here V naught T as indeed V C T times two over two plus two, which means that V naught T is indeed half of V. CT, so V naught T equals to, what did I have? 9.6 divided by 2. Four point eight minus point eight e to the power minus T over 1.6, 10 to the power minus 6 volts. So this is my function, V naught T. Now, if I want to draw this function, so I have here, 4.8 minus point eight e to the power minus d over 1.6 minus 6 volts. So this is the time the voltage. Now notice that uh, the voltage if you substitute T with zero you're gonna get 4.8 minus 0.8 now go back to the V, V, uh, C, zero. It was eight. Now, remember the relationship between VC and V naught, that V naught is half of the voltage. So, Here I will be starting at four, right? You can find those points, just V naught, put T equals to zero. You're gonna get 4.8 minus 0.8, right? So V naught at T equals zero is four. Four volts. So we're starting from four volts, and then look at the infinity. V naught t equals to infinity. In this case, it will be if t is infinity, then this is zero. Four point eight volt, right? So in this case. The capacitor has moved, this is 4, point, 4 volt, and this is 4.8. So at T infinity, 
the capacitor has charged so let's assume that here is infinity so the capacitor is going to behave like this so in other words the capacitor had a 4 volt initial voltage store uh, across it and then when I opened the switch, the capacitor was charged further. It went from 4 volt to 4.8 volts. Okay. So this is how we solve for first order circuits. I have one more example that is solved here. I will leave that to you to try it. Don't look at the solution. Just try solving uh, this example uh, on your own, and then you can check the solution later on. Uh, keep in mind that this circuit has dependent and independent sources, which means that the only difference here you're going to see is when you find the R7. You cannot switch off the sources because you have dependent sources. So you have to use either the open circuit, short circuit approach, or switch off the dependent the independent source and hook up a source of one volt or one ampere right at the output. So we can use either of those approaches, but I'll leave this one to you to try it on your own to make sure that you fully understood this procedure, how to solve for first order circuits using step by step approach. Okay, thank you so much and I'll see you next lecture.